Thanks for joining me as I travel the world, going from fine dining through to street food and local specialties, all in an effort to find the world's best seafood. Sushi Bar Yasuda is considered one of the best Japanese restaurants in New York City. It's got one Michelin star, and on paper, it's got everything going for it. Let's check it out. And it's all as you'd expect in terms of decoration. Simple, refined, nice wood with a huge selection of sake in the menu. One thing that struck me as I walked through was, it's a huge restaurant, four or five times bigger than I had anticipated. And the sushi bar looks nice and quaint and intimate, but the rest of the setting is really not at all. It almost felt like a cafeteria. But you can see they have a great selection of fish, including a lot of different types within each subcategory. However, on the day we were there, there was a lot of things that were unavailable, but were still listed on the menu. So when it came time for us to actually order, it became a pain. They finally give you a piece of paper to order for yourself like you would at a sushi train. So this whole menu was actually kind of for nothing because a lot of the stuff actually wasn't available. Taking a look, some of the sushi and sashimi combinations and the set meals were actually quite good value. But once you got into ordering a la carte pieces of sushi, the price really went up. And I have no problem with that. I've been very fortunate to eat the, some of the best sushi around the world and you pay for what you get. So taking a look at what they actually had available on the night, you can see it was still quite a lot, but not as much as the main menu. So after a couple of small amuse bouches, we ordered the soft shell crab. It was well prepared, perfectly fried with nice sides, but overall the flavor from it was really nothing special. And the texture was again, fine, but nothing to write home about. You wouldn't think that this was necessarily a Michelin starred restaurant. As we geared up with the fresh wasabi and quality soy sauce for the next dishes, I had high hopes. We went with a sushi sampler, one of the sets, as well as a mix of sashimi. From first glance, the tuna didn't look particularly high quality to me, the red tuna at least. We ordered two different kinds of sea eel. Now whilst these close-up shots are great for food porn, what I'm actually showing is the back corner was quite dry and the front corner really succulent. Now that's often the case with eel that the center is the juiciest, but overall it felt a little overcooked to me. Getting on to the sushi and here's where we're getting into the quality tuna and sea urchin. And we did have the sea urchin in a couple of different ways from different regions from California as well as from Japan. We also had a crab sushi, so this trio was really their deluxe sampler. Now, taking a look at the close-ups, this is really high quality fish. I have to say, I think my overall impression of the restaurant was colored a lot by the fact that we were in the main restaurant, not at the sushi bar. And to be honest, the atmosphere just didn't feel nice or special at all. The decor was okay. And when you're paying this kind of a price for a meal, $300 before tip for two people, including drinks. And it's Michelin starred and it has all this hype, I really expected more. The food was just adequate, but nothing better than I would expect from a $60 meal at somewhere else. It's a $20 meal in Japan in a Michelin starred building that seats five times more people than it should with less professional staff than you would expect at this price point. For me, disappointing and by far the most overpriced Japanese meal I've ever had. But don't let that get you down. Make sure you like and subscribe to join me on my ongoing quest to find the world's best seafood.